oh man, this is big time. You know, these are big time <laughs> games, and I'm next to Nintendo. I'm next to you know, Sony. Exactly. They're right next to me, right? And that's it's crazy to think that like you are. You know, you're, of course, like there's like so much to to grow, of course. But it's yeah. like being on the same platform, and people are seeing their content and your content. It's it feels awesome. I have that same feeling, but then slowly I, I, I began to accept it. I began to look. Yes, I am here, and I am doing well. I am a developer. Like you, you start to believe in yourself. Leon Ivy, a serious upcoming POC game developer, he juggles making his first indie game title while holding down a full time job, and is about to release his demo of high school hills, dreams, and nightmares. We both boothed our games to thousands of people in the UK. Today, we're gonna find out his story and how he became an indie developer, along with his struggles and wins. I'm Daniel Peterson, and let's get to our session with Leon Ivey. All right. Uh, welcome everybody for episode three of the new podcast for Baca, the Baca cast as I call it. Um, this is uh, Leon Ivy. Why don't you introduce yourself and everything? Hi, I'm Leon Ivy. I am the solo developer of High School Hills, Dreams and Nightmares. I've been working on it since lockdown. Um, so prior to lockdown, I had no experience, completely new to game dev. Um, I and I thought, why not make a game? This is the perfect opportunity to, to be creative. And uh, here we are today. So, so we we worked at Insomnia, um, the Insomnia event in, in Birmingham and everything. And uh, yeah, how how did you find your experience with like like boothing and everything? How'd... Um, yeah, so Insomnia was my first, well, I would say, second official um, event. So initially, I had one in Australia, but I wasn't I wasn't actually there. So High School Hills was first debuted in Australia, um, and. Um, Unfortunately, I wasn't there, so I couldn't actually get the full experience. I didn't really know how it went, but in some years, was, I was there and I got to experience, like, you know, how um, how to interact with the, the players, what people wanted to see in the game, and um, yeah. So in some years, was my, kind of my first event where I got to see how the players would interact with the game, so it was, it was really important and really cool. Yeah, it, I think it's, it's a really valuable experience, um, e even though, like... I feel like the ROI for a lot of events is not there. Like you're not going to usually get a return back monetarily, but I think mm -hmm. it's really important for just play testing and like, you know, oh. that's the, probably the biggest thing that I've gotten from it is like, yeah. <laughs> like that's invaluable information. When people just try to play the game and you have groups mm -hmm. or people that are just like trying to do things that you wouldn't normally do as the developer. Like, I ah, just, you know, why would you do that? <laughs> exactly. You know, like there was like this, this 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 boy who would like go into like random corners. I was like, clearly there's nothing there. But <laughs> with that, you find bugs that you won't find. Like they'll be clipping through the the, the the level. Like oh my god, like fantastic. This is great. This is exactly what I need. So totally. not just bugs, but also like just ideas. Like if you're like have writer's block or some sort of like block, you can't think of anything creative. Just people playing your game, you will see like things that you wouldn't see before if that makes sense right so it's good to have people play test and just be there in the background to see it yeah totally I, like i had my my form and everything to get feedback and everything but, but i also ask in the form uh for feedback like do you have any ideas any character ideas any and, and it's really cool like people will, people say like when you have like a thousand people or so play your game you know mm. people are going to have ideas that you just never thought of and i i like different modes or uh, different story elements or different mechanics or UI, you, you know, things. I, I think it's really cool to just kind of get that feedback and, um, from from just your average gamer rather than other developers mm. that kind of have like a, a, you know, a different kind of film over their eyes, you know, as far as playing games <laughs> goes and everything. Well, more of like a, <clears throat> I don't know, a mechanics. They're, I, I think that when you're a gamer, you just want to have fun, right? And I think that's probably the biggest deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> we can get caught yeah. in the weeds a little too hard sometimes as developers. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think from that experience, there was a lot of stress at the start. You feel, oh my God, like people are going to find bugs and they're going to hate your game. But yes, they will find bugs, but that is not, you know, that's not something to worry about. People just yeah. want to have like fun, right? People just want to play your game. They don't care about mm -hmm. the nitty gritty small things that you're working on that you're passionate about. Yeah. Um, which is good to be passionate, but at the same time, it's also 
um, it's about the experience of like the overall experience, right? And if they if, if they've enjoyed it overall, that's all that matters. Absolutely. Now we'll yeah. um, for the viewers, we will have um, we'll have his links. We'll have your links and everything uh, in the description below and everything. So if you ever want to see his stuff and his games, um, it will be below. I wanted to ask, um, like, how long have you? So you, you're talking about the the game time and development everything like um mm -hmm. what was your kind of like journey into doing game development like what like how what made you interested in games and like um and how long have you kind of like taken the journey into games and like uh, you know as a programmer artist everything that you're doing yeah um so i would say i started off with no experience prior to lockdown so right. my background is quite technical so my, my my day job is technical so i'm an it infrastructure engineer just resigned, got a new job, <laughs> but um, I have a technical background. So I have an idea about a few things, um, but I didn't have any coding experience prior to lockdown. So I didn't know how to do C sharp. So I had to wow, yeah. go out there and learn how to do C sharp. And from that, there's loads of places you can go to, to learn. Like YouTube is a, a free place to, to learn. Um, yeah. There's uh, which is one of the probably the best places if you want to don't want to spend any money. Uh, <laughs> UD is um, there's a, there's a cost, but it's, it's it's super cheap. I mean, you can always wait for the deals. The deals are <laughs> weekly sometimes, um, but there's plenty of information there. Four courses on learning, you know, how to do things. So um, and the same for pixel art. I didn't have any experience prior to lockdown about pixel art. I didn't understand how pixel art, pixel art works. You need to understand how color theory works. Without color theory, you can't put pixel together, pixels together to understand right. how they kind of like pop in the game. So I had to go away and learn that. Again, there's like plenty of places you can look like Reddit, um, Instagram, oh, yeah. you can like know like loads of people who are like professionals and you can see how they would work or like, again, YouTube. Um, there's one guy I was watching for a while. He's things Pixel Pete. He's great. He Pixel does like Pete. really simple, like <laughs> he does really simple, small, um, sixteen by sixteen pixel art. Um, and the reason why he's so good to watch is because his his images are so small and simple, and that's what you need if you're if you're learning. What what happens is people come in and they want to learn pixel art. They they start way too big and they don't really understand. Or right? so they'll go like maybe forty eight by forty eight, the size of the pixels, and that's super complicated and super right. hard. But it's better to start super small and simple. So Pixel Pete is a great guy to to follow if you really want to understand how Pixel art works. So awesome. there's a lot of research. And and during lockdown, that was mostly what I was doing. It's just the research, understanding how, okay, if I'm going to make a game, how am I going to do it? Totally. So, um, and then towards the end of lockdown, that's when I actually started working on the game. No, that's cool. I'll definitely be asking you about the resources that you would suggest people would go to and everything like your primary resources that you would suggest for the audience. I think that would be phenomenal information, yeah. right? How'd you get to where you were and everything. And I actually showed your game on, on stream earlier today. Um, Ooh. and, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and so like the fact that you were able to pull what you pulled off in such a short amount of time, relatively like from lockdown, that's phenomenal. Like the, from learning <laughs> stage to, to that, that's, that's insane, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's so weird because it's like everyone says that's crazy. Like you know, you're you're a single developer. Yeah. How did you like put all this together? But I think at the end of the day, it comes down to um, passion for one. Like you, you have to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy yeah, it, yeah. you're not going to do it. And you have to keep at it. Like there's going to be times where there's there's going to be low times where you don't want to do it, and that's fine. It's okay to feel like you can distance yourself from it and take a break. As long as you go back to it and, um, and, and keep working at it. Like, I mean, you don't have to work hundreds of, hundreds of hours every day. Right. You can set yourself like 10 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. So 10 minutes, I'm gonna work on a game. And then that 10 minutes usually turns into 20 minutes or 30 minutes because you may be enjoying it, having fun. But if you just set that mindset of 10 minutes a day, that's enough to keep you going. Yeah. Um, but don't pressure yourself, like don't, allow it to become a problem keep the the joy of it right so for me i'm a hobbyist i have a full-time job and i do this as a hobby but 
yes, it's grown and yes, it's becoming a little bit more serious, but I still enjoy the rush of doing it every day. So I think that's really important for people to know that you don't have to quit your job and just because yeah. and in fact you probably shouldn't right like if in most cases unless you you have a uh you know you're living with your family and you have a lot of your bills covered and everything there mm -hmm. you really shouldn't go that route you know and mm -hmm. and and it's very very risky and you know there is of course like the the romanticism of that but mm -hmm. it is uh it's a trap you know um <laughs> games are quite risky right as as yeah, it, yeah. no i agree like um the gaming world is is difficult like it is i i'm i am not a full-time dev i do this like i said as, as a hobby but but i can see how difficult it is i know i'm still fairly new to not making the game i've been making the game for a while but i'm fairly new to put myself out there so insomnia and the uh, the event in australia is the first two events that i've really put this game out there where people can actually play it and get an idea of how it feels. Yes, I have social media, um, but social media is kind of like a blanket. It's easy to hide behind social media and be like, okay, yeah. this is my game. <laughs> I hope you like it. I, re I release what I want to release. People are only going to see what I want them to see. But when right. you put the game out there to everyone to see, um, that's when it becomes real. And that's when I feel like it became real for me, like because people can you know, find the bugs or really see what you think about the game. So going kind of explaining what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that um, it's really easy to start something and then kind of like be, a, be afraid to kind of, you know, let people see what it is. If that makes sense. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's really easy to kind of like have a guise of, Oh, look how, look how awesome it is. And just have like a blip of the good part of your game. Mm. You know, like I can show the cool mechanics that I have just designed and everything and like, oh, check mm -hmm. out the new character or the cool mechanic. But the fact that like it doesn't work in 90% of the situations, you know, like, <laughs> like I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Um, I think going back to what I was saying, because I think we're kind of rearing off, yeah. is how difficult it is. Um, so I think um, not just putting yourself out there, um, it's difficult but also like trying to understand or even getting funding funding is quite difficult because yes. the gaming world yes when you're at the top you can make a, a lot of money but if you're starting out and a, and a solo developer i feel that there's not a lot of um i mean i did a lot of research but i feel that right. for someone who wants to get into it they don't re they wouldn't really know where to start mm -hmm. um, and luckily for me i had lockdown to to really like dive into it and do the research uh, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah it, it was good and good and bad for certain people. Yeah, good and bad, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so kind of like overall, what I'm trying to say here is that it is difficult, but once you get your footing, there is a lot of information out there, and there's a lot of things that you can find. It's just where to look for them. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I mean, it it took me quite a while to become like a full time indie developer and everything and that's mm -hmm. after you know after a uh, lots of schooling and and other projects and I, I think that um you know i never thought i was going to be able to do it i really didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't think it was gonna be possible right i mean i, I figured that i would always have to have a part-time job or a full-time job and and do part-time hours um which i did for years and years you know and um i i think that that's one other thing is is the kind of grit it takes to 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 be able to pull that off because a lot mm -hmm. of people just want to go home and and relax and it's very <laughs> it's just not going to happen right i mean like like of course you want to have a break and if you're feeling burnt out mm -hmm. you know you should have you know a rest but but um but yeah I, I think it is important to even just to have a little bit of time like you were saying like 10 20 minutes the whole mm -hmm. like atomic habits vibe uh, you know like it's it's good um, it's good to keep a schedule if you can and just have, have a, a little bit of each done each day. Have those like simple wins that make you feel like you're getting momentum uh, on, on your yeah. game. Um, you know, and yeah, try to put yourself out there and everything. Um, it, but, but yeah, like there, there are multiple ways of getting into games uh, other than just getting into like a big team or a big company. Mm. Um, but it, it is a, a very big ramp up, uh, especially with indie. It's, you know, it's, it mm. it's a big like late game scale and it's like, um, like for instance, I, I even, I heard this from pirate software and I think it's, it's totally correct. Like if you don't have a community 
then it is very mm. hard to run a Kickstarter campaign, for instance. Because mm. um, if you already, already don't have like backers or people that know who you are and care about your project, then <clears throat> a Kickstarter does very little to market your campaign. Mm. Uh, or, or usually does, unless it like you, suddenly gets a bump for whatever reason. Um, mm. And so I think that's totally correct. Is if you if you don't have enough uh, of a following, then it can be very uh, tough to get to get your goal. That's just like a smaller goal, and then you know you, you get momentum from there. But <laughs> but yeah. um, but funding can be very difficult and very tricky. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that, that's really cool that you're able to you know even to do your do your current job and, and get as much done as you have. I, it's even more impressive that has been a part time effort and you've gotten done so much. Uh, you know and and. Um, so do you have a, 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 a small team? Is it, is it all solo dev? Yeah. So, um, what I've learned, um, over the years, I mean, it's taken me probably slightly longer because I haven't like, again, I, you, you kind of learn as you go. So there was a lot of just me doing it. Yeah. So during, during, during lockdown, learning, whatever, and then actually getting into it, there was a lot of me just trying, trial and error, error, right. Just trying oh, to understand boy. how, um, and I would say, if I could go back, I would do it differently. I would reach out and get help um, because it's okay to ask for help. I, I feel like yeah. oh, this is my, this is mine. I'm passionate about it. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to do this whole thing myself. But for anyone out there who, who is starting out, don't be afraid to reach out for help. Don't be afraid to build a team. Uh, and, and that's what I found. I, I, I feel only up until recently, um, I was pretty much doing a lot of it myself. So I have this guy, uh, Trevor, he's a good friend of mine. I've known him for many years uh, and he makes the music. Awesome. For um, High School Hills, which is amazing. If you guys like uh, Stardew Valley, the music in Stardew Valley, I would say it's pretty much, I would say it's better than, uh, than, than Stardew Valley. Like some of the, some of the tracks he can make, some of the Dang. tracks he's made, they're, they're good, if not better than Stardew Valley. So he, He's great, and that really makes the game pop. Like, I don't feel I could have made tracks like that um, for my game. Mm. I mean, I can make music, but I'm not as good as him. So, you know, again, putting yourself out there is really important. And luckily, I have Trevor as a friend uh, to help me make the music. But that's really made the difference. Uh, so there's that. And then uh, recently, I so I had a guy who helped me with the coding. Um, maybe a couple of months ago, well, maybe about a year ago, but he was kind of really on the side. I didn't really give him too much. And then when I realized that the game is not moving fast enough, yeah. especially when I have this, um, these expos coming up, I really put myself out there. So I reached out to a couple of people through um, Discord. Um, and that's a great place to find developers. Oh, yeah. I found some really good developers. Um, and that's really sped things up. So I found this guy who um, he's from Australia um, and he's studying programming and he was absolutely, I mean, I've lost him now because he had to move on, but he was absolutely amazing. He made so many improvements to the game so quickly and I was just shocked, completely shocked. Um, yes, I had to pay for him. Yeah. Yes, um, it can be slightly costly if you're really putting in the hours, but I feel if you're passionate about the game, why not invest? Because you're not just investing in the game, you're investing in yourself, right? Investing yeah. in yourself is, is important. If you if you believe in your game, you you should invest in it, right? So, I thought I need to take these steps. So I started mm -hmm. investing in the game, investing in myself, um, and it's made such a massive difference. Um, so, unfortunately, I've lost him, but that's fine because now I've realised it's very important to have a team. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm back on I'm back on uh, Discord looking for new engineers and also pixel artists um so we'll see how it goes that's awesome you heard it here if you want to work on a team <laughs> yeah. 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 no that's Hiring. awesome <laughs> yeah i i actually found my programmer on discord as well um from just like one of the random forums that i was on it just asking for help um you know, I it, and I, the the first programmer I had was from uh, the university that I was at, and um, mm. and that was really helpful. He was working with me for about a year and a half. Um, but then my current programmer is also from Australia, which is really funny. Um, yeah, I don't know about Australian programmers just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're really done. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 
but yeah, you know, you do, you do have to do it. Like I, I pay for them. Um, you know, I, I contract out, uh, you know, like rigging and animation. I can actually rig and animate myself. But like you were saying, like uh, with the music thing, I, you, I feel like I couldn't do the quality of that they do. Um, you know, exactly. And, yeah, these yeah. rigs and animations but, are complicated, and they can, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can do anything. Like, like the last couple of years have showed me that I can do everything to be a solo developer. But it's just going to take so much time, and yes. you want the quality to to stay at a high level. Yes, you can do that, but it's just going to take you a long time. And if you really want to complete this game, it's going to become slightly more difficult the more you spend time on it. Because let's be honest. You know, you can be passionate about some something, but you know, if many years pass, like you know, five, six, seven years, eventually things are gonna, you know, other things are gonna come up. So why not reach out and get the help? Absolutely, yeah. It helps with the speed. It helps with, and I think there's something to be said about um, specialists, right? Like if that's what mm-hmm. they do for a living, like like um, people that I contract, that's what they do, you know. And that's and I think yeah. that's really helpful because you get really good return on investment. Um, mm-hmm. and I, and I know, I, and I feel bad because a lot of entry level people, uh, can take a long time to get work done that would not be the same mm-hmm. level as a senior. And so, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people that I, I contract have been seniors and, but what they can do in an hour, even if they're 60 bucks an hour, a hundred dollars an hour, um, mm-hmm. is, is so, so significant. Um, and so mm-hmm. I always find that it's worth the cost. Um, and it'll just feel polished. Right. And yeah. if you, and that's really cool, you know, and <laughs> it, yeah, no, no. yeah. I, I've, I've seen it with the, the guy, unfortunately, I lost. Um, you, you pay a little bit more, but you, you see the difference. You see, like you say, I know it's sad to, to not get someone in entry level, but you, they may, they may work on something and then you get it and it's like, oh, it's not quite how you want it. And then you got to go back and then more time is wasted. So I get it. Sometimes you have to pay a little bit more to to get best quality results. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I so what has been like a, a like a bad experience that you've had with with your your game development journey? Um, and I, I, I like I, there's there's you know good and bad experiences like uh, uh, maybe like at the high of like this is going to work. This is really cool. And like mm. uh, um, and then a, a kind of like a, a lower experience that you've you've exp- like you've had. Um, where yeah. you kind of like question if you want to keep doing it or not. That's a great question because no one actually knows this, but before High School Hills, there was another game. It was called Pixel Fighters. Uh, and I was working on that for maybe four months, maybe a bit less. And it just didn't work. I, I didn't feel like I had the experience. I was going in way too hard. And this goes back to me saying like, you need to really do some research because you will start big. Everyone wants to, wants to start big because they want to make an amazing game. Mm-hmm. And there's something wrong with that because you need to learn from your mistakes. So what I did is I went in really big and I couldn't do it. And I was like, do I continue and really push for this going forward or do I start again? Four months in, do I just like throw this project aside? And I made a uh, decision to be like, okay, that's it. I'm going to, I can show you the, I can show you the old content. It's, it's terrible, but I'm happy to show you. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right you know, and then you can see like you, like you've learned you've learned what yeah. you're capable of doing you've learned that it's okay to make mistakes and you know you can you can start again and it, don't be afraid to start again you can be six months in you can be a year in don't be afraid to start again and i i even came across someone who had that same um experience at the at the assembly uh, that we went to so they started off a game in 2d and he wasn't happy. They wasn't happy with that. So they changed it. They changed the 3D. Um, so, you know, don't yeah. be afraid to change something if you put so many hours into it because it doesn't mean you failed. It just means that it just wasn't right for you. Like, you, you, there's, 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 there's always a different way. Yeah, absolutely. So that was a low point. When I, when I thought, great, <laughs> I can't do this. I'm going to start again. So that was probably a bad point for me. But from the bad point, I've learned that you know, it's okay to, it's okay to start again. Absolutely. Yeah. Like they, <laughs> I, I, I hate the term. Um, but the, when, in, in, when I was in school, they call it killing your babies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have a, you have a project you're working on and it's just yeah. like, it's your baby. And it's like, 
I get it. Yeah. No, just just you. Sometimes it just doesn't feel right, and you know, and or if it goes on too long, or if it just feels like you just want to do again. And yeah, I I think that that yeah, it's a it's a bad term, but it's yeah, it's kind of what what it is. What what's a what's a point where you felt like this was going to work that you felt like pretty confident, um, where like you wanted to be a game developer and you know that's just what you wanted to do. You know, I, I guess it goes back to seeing High School Hills. I mean, there's been a number of times. There's been many, many hurdles, many um, ups and downs. But throughout the process of making High School Hills, it's just the feedback I've been getting from mostly friends and family because it's only in the last couple of months I've really pushed it out there. Online is very difficult to break. People can be very harsh online, um, mm-hmm. which is which is fine. Like you, you have to kind of be prepared for that. Yeah. But overall, it's been positive. Even online, it's been positive. There's been a few horrible comments, but that's quite normal. Sure. Um, but I felt when I uh, eventually bought it to Insomnia, that was kind of the the pivotal point. Is like, wow, I'm I'm a solid, I'm a developer. Like it, <laughs> it, it doesn't it doesn't like really hit you until. Yeah. Um, into it does. I can't explain it. It just doesn't hit you. Do like people, people tell me. Like my, my, my partner tells me all the time. Oh, you're, like, you're really creative. You're a developer. I'm like no, I'm not. I'm a fraud. I'm a. You know, it's, it's what is it called when it's the um, imposter syndrome. Imposter when you feel syndrome, like you, yeah. yeah, when you feel like you're, you're not really meant to like it. It's good, but you don't. You know, you're not really meant to like. This is. I'm not meant to be here. This is. This yeah. is not me. This is be someone else, right? Yeah. Um, I really, I really yeah. felt like I am a developer after, after, um, after Insomnia. So that's kind of pushing me to do more. That's awesome. And shout out to uh, to our partners for helping us at, at Insomnia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Ace, uh, it was amazing. It was. Yeah. It was like, yeah. It, like with, with, without without assistance at an event it basically means no breaks for eight hours. That's what that means. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <clears throat> but that's really cool. So that was very recent then that you had that kind of feeling of, of being, you know, and that's really, that's really cool. And I, I feel like I, I feel the same way when I went to PAX West and I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh man, this is big time. You know, these are big time <laughs> games and I'm next to Nintendo. I'm next to, you know, Sony. Exactly. They're right, right next to me. Right. And that's, it's crazy to think that like, you are, you know, you're of course like there's like so much to to grow, of course. But it's yeah. like being on the same platform, and people are seeing their content and your content. It's it feels awesome. Yeah, so, I literally yeah. had that. I actually felt like when everything was set up and the kind of the chaos calmed down, I looked around and I was like, oh my god, like what am I doing here? Like there's so so many cool games. It's like <laughs> I had that same feeling, but then slowly I, I I began to accept it. I began to be like, yes. I am here and I am doing well. I am a developer. Like you, you start to believe in yourself. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is awesome. It really yeah. is. So um, I'm not sure. Have you ever done any contract work yourself? Like it's just for people like, like not everyone's in a contract. Like a lot of times you just want to do your own thing and you also have your full-time job. Have you ever considered it or have you ever done contract work? And if you did, where where did you find that, those contracts? If you did. To be honest, no contract work. I okay. feel like Again, um, only after in, in Sonia, I feel comfortable or confident to, to, to put myself out there. But I feel, again, it's like, why would people want to pay for my, ah, my work? Yeah. Um, but who knows? Um, to be honest, I don't think I have, have time to do that. But yes. if, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if that's people are interested in some of my artwork or... Um, the way I create games, then you know, I won't mind putting myself out there. If I have the time, I, I will do it. Right. Yeah. You're you're a busy guy, and I think that when when you when you become really busy and people will start noticing, then being more in demand just means that if you ever do contracts, you just charge a lot more. Like yeah, you know, yeah. like my rate has gone up triple since it used to be. You know, now that mm-hmm. people actually see my content and actually like are, are hitting mm-hmm. me up, that's just how it goes. Like the the more people know you, the more people like like your games and like your artwork, like your what you're doing. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, well, if if you want, you know, hour of my time, this is how much it's gonna cost, you know. And so I think that's just 
that's the cool thing about it as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> content you should you should pay me more now so well i mean that's like if, <laughs> if they like your work and and they're you're consistent about like okay i can make this kind of style and this is what you're wanting um very few people can actually style match um for art specifically like style match for like mm -hmm. music or art like um it's competitive but it's like if you specialize in something or you're like really good at something then yeah you'll you probably get hit up you know if you haven't already been hit up then you probably will get mm -hmm. a, you know hit up and everything and that's just like so that's why that's why I ask a lot of the contracts that I've gotten have been through discord, um, you know, or at mm -hmm. events and everything like asking if I do side work and everything. So um, mm -hmm. and LinkedIn, LinkedIn's a big one. Um, I actually, yeah. I've seen that LinkedIn isn't as big as as big in the UK as it in the US. But the US is like everything. It's kind of weird. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, to be honest, LinkedIn, I mean, I'm constantly getting hit up on LinkedIn for my personal day stage job, but not. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm not putting anything out there. That makes sense. So sure. I don't have a LinkedIn for, hi, I'm Leon, I sort of developer. It doesn't exist. So maybe if I did that, maybe I'll be getting all the, <laughs> all the requests. Um, <laughs> but I haven't seen LinkedIn, but, but that's something that, um, you know, I may do in the future because yeah. I know we spoke about that in the past and um, it seems like a good place to find, uh, just connect with people. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I, I actually, for for when i first got into linkedin i just like that was cool that was cool like like you see all these people that have like you know um really cool art or animation jobs and everything and you just i just like connected with like everyone that i thought was how to have like a cool job you know mm -hmm. and then people started like interacting with what i was posting and i'm like oh crap like people like that's cool like that's what's so cool about it is that linkedin kind of is more of like a, a career focused you know, um, you know it's, yeah, it's a very career focused posting place. Whereas like, you know, um, the crap posting and every other, you know, <laughs> the site, yeah. you know, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely look into that then because I think yeah, if that was like professional, like you can, if you're really looking for like a professional person, yeah. I think that's a good place. Oh, yeah, that's where I found my animator as, as well. Um, just like, mm, I'm like, okay. I want to find an animator in my state, you know, at the time when I was in back in Utah. Um, mm -hmm. And that way I could like, you know, I could knock at their door if they ever did anything bad. You know, I could, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, I, <laughs> yeah. if I found a local one. Um, but yeah, and it, and it turned out really well. And, you know, we were able to chat and like get wings together. Just like, I, you know, sat down and was able to just chat with them about my project. I think that's really cool if you can find someone that's like local and professional. Um, that's cool. That is a good point. Um, yeah. It's a very good point because usually people I find are always somewhere else in the world. So. Sure, which is fine. Mm -hmm. It was just totally fine. You, if you get your work done, you get work done. You know, but yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, but it is cool to have a few locals if you can. Um, that we could just actually hang out together and we like meet them up and everything. And that like boosts morale, I think, on the project. You know, yeah. gets them more interested and like more interested in what you're doing and like actually like physically say hi to them, you know, uh, if you want to. <laughs> if you want, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll look into that's a, that's a good show. Um, so, so I heard you, you were doing YouTube before. Are you thinking about promoting yourself there again or how you, how are you feeling about promoting yourself and your, and your work? <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, YouTube is a lot of work yes. and it's, uh, I know YouTube is a great place. It's a fantastic place to really grow your socials and really grow your your uh, everything, basically, in terms of bringing in your audience. I would like to get back to it, but every time I do, I kind of feel myself falling away from it again. Sure. Um, um, which is difficult. I really need to find a way to... Um, I, I don't know if the problem is the recording itself or it's the editing i think it's a combination of both but maybe if i can um record some raw information with raw data uh, then i can pass it along to someone else and they can do the editing for me i think it takes up a lot of time to do that and i don't have that time totally. but I, but i have been thinking um and have been trying to figure out different ways of um getting content out, content out there and um, i think streaming is a good way because with yeah. streaming you can you can stream and work at the same time but again there comes the editing editing process but i feel with that you can still kind of like throw it to someone else give it to someone else you can yeah especially as you get larger um and you have a bigger community and it pays better over time then you can yeah. kind of allocate 
those things out and you kind of build your team around that uh that content and the game itself if you have your team with there um mm -hmm. <clears throat> i know we chatted about this uh past insomnia and everything but i i i have found that that youtube shorts has been the best way to get yeah. an outreach and everything um there's definitely some cool ways to do it but um mostly because like they just they just have a way better way of finding you than typical YouTube videos, it seems. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, you can just repop, you know, repush those videos, the same vertical vi uh, videos on like Instagram and TikTok, mm -hmm. um, and even even Twitter or X. Um, th those vertical views work very well on like all those platforms, and so you can just kind of like reuse them for all of your major platforms, um, which is you know it just really works well that way, um, and it seems to be the best way that I've seen to get the word out. Um, I'm not sure if so you. Go ahead. So you're talking about shorts, right? You're not talking about just like the normal YouTube. You're talking about YouTube shorts. Correct. Because you're yeah. Talking... Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Maybe that's something I'll look into as well. Yeah, shorts. Shorts are awesome. Like I, I do, I do live streaming because I want to be able to, you know, hang out with the community, build my community, um, mm -hmm. you know, while I'm working in the game and everything. Um, so that has been really awesome for that. But I think that the shorts have been the best way to build the community, and then like they can hang out during the stream or you know however they want to you know interact with the content or whatever I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I think that shorts have been probably one of the best one of the best ways. And I'm not sure if you've you've heard of the game uh, Rolling Rascals or Rolling Rascals, but um, yeah. They were uh, recently funded pretty well on Kickstarter, um, mm -hmm. and they primarily used uh, sh like shorts videos to show off like their updates and everything. And because it has the best way of getting found on YouTube and everything, I think they either they either pushed it on like a Google ad or they just used it because of its natural way of growing using it for mm -hmm. shorts. And I didn't see like a normal video like amongst them, so it was like shorts and shorts and shorts and like showing oh we're doing kickstarter campaign right now and like these like we got funded and this is the next updates and like it was all shorts it was really cool um that's pretty I recent thought so. i thought tiktok was pretty good as well is tiktok yes. as good as um tick um as shorts mm -hmm. well so they they are they are good in different ways um and that's actually why i have my um my youtube and twitch uh, tags in the bottom of my YouTube shorts so people on mm -hmm. TikTok and, and, and Instagram can like find me or search from that from that tag mm -hmm. um, for my name and everything um, but yeah TikTok is a great way like each video probably gets over a thousand views uh, on, on mm -hmm. TikTok and pretty fast too so it has a very good way of naturally finding you so but the cool thing about that is that like you just reuse the same shorts video on mm -hmm. platforms and that's why it works so well um, mm -hmm. but yeah so that's how I that's why I've been doing promotion stuff like that um, yeah and uh yeah i can definitely we can definitely chat about that it's it's it's, it's been cool <laughs> yeah how, how long would you do, how long would you do a short for like how long is, is it like the same as tiktok like one minute mm -hmm. I think. yeah it has to be a little yeah it has to be uh less than one minute um okay. you know and and you basically just like as fast as you can as snappy as you can like say what it's about like this is what i'm doing mm -hmm. or even show the final result of it or like get right into gameplay because gameplay is king mm -hmm. like um and if you have mm -hmm. bugs it's always funny to see bugs and so unless you like want to be like only polish uh which is fine yeah. uh some people are like that for sure like i love showing bugs i think it's hilarious and people like it's just funny to see <laughs> so no, I mean, yeah. that's like i was i was such a like i was afraid of bugs right i was afraid of showing any bugs but i think it's good to it's funny, right? People yeah. like funny content online. Like funny <laughs> content is like number one, right? Yeah. So yeah, I should just find some funny stuff and like put in. I'm sure I've got your bugs I can put in there. So <laughs> yeah, it's like it's cool to have really fun, fun polished stuff. Like oh, check out my game. Like this is the new mechanic we've added, or this is a new like character. Um, you know. But I think some of my like most viewed stuff has been like just the goofy stuff, you know. And this is mm -hmm. which is get people interested in your game. Like it, like drives that emotion of just funny, <laughs> you know. Exactly. Um, yeah. So. Um, so how much are you planning on charging for your game or do you have an idea of that yet or like, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So I do have an idea. Um, I feel because it's an indie game and I feel that upon my research, um, I want it to be like a fair amount. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you the press. It's 999. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah, that's the price. Um, and I, I want it to be like a fair price and I want it to be yeah something that everyone can can buy you know it's not gonna be like super expensive and it's an indie game i know like indie games are not super expensive anyway there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's like a price range so i want it to be somewhere in the middle so 
Um, who knows? Maybe at launch I'll have like a cell. So maybe you should grab it ASAP. Buy some cell. Hey, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for our U.S. viewers, that's roughly twelve fifty in uh, in USD because we're talking about pounds over here. <laughs> oh, pounds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sterling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sterling. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's cool. It's, it's really good to have that in mind, um, especially if you ever like, I don't know if you ever plan on working with a publisher, but they, they love to know that kind of stuff, like what your plan is for for mm -hmm. financing. They want to know if you're like get their money back or um, and it's a good idea for you to kind of understand what kind of level of quality and like how long you want your game to be. I and mean, then, like, OK, this is worth this is worth 10 pounds sterling. You know, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. it's like I think that's really that's really good. Uh, to kind of like quality check and, and kind of know that value and ahead of time and everything. Like if I make a small demo game, I'm either going to be putting out for free or like a dollar, right? It's just like a, you know, mm -hmm. a pound, you know? So yeah, <laughs> but if it's, you know, if it's a story game and you've been working on it for a while, that's totally makes sense. Like we, yeah. they, uh, I know my professors were talking about it in the sense of like, if you go out into the movie theater and you spend $20 on watching a film or saving 15, um, you know, that's that's two hours of entertainment value. Mm -hmm. Whereas if a game, if a game is, is 10 hours or five hours even of, of entertainment value, then it should, it's at least worth half of a movie, right? And so that totally makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And I mean, games like, I, I, I guess I pumped a lot of my life into this game. So I think that's quite reasonable for the amount of time I pumped into it. Right. Uh, but I also want it to be affordable. And it's also my first game and Coming into the the gaming industry, unknown people can like who who is this guy? Leon Over right. Games, or whatever. That's very important to not just like, hey, like I put so many hours into this, I want you to, you know, thirty pounds, you know, or like forty dollars. Um, so I think it's very important to kind of have like a, uh, you know, like a medium. Like, okay, yes, I have spent a lot of time on it, but also I'm unknown, so mm -hmm. I want people to, you know, buy the game and then you know maybe High School Hills too. A little bit more, who knows? So, so what inspired you to make High School Hills? As far as like, what other games like did you play that are, are similar to, or like sort of similar to, uh, either art wise or mechanic wise? In terms of the story, I'm going with. So, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people play this game, um, The Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. What's like that? A, <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> yeah, I've never heard of it. Um, <laughs> totally, totally. But I'm, yeah, um, it's. In terms of like the mystery in the game, it's like, like what is actually going? When you first play it for the first time, it's like, oh my god, like it's open world because it was like a it was around a time when like open world was like quite new, right? Yeah. Uh, and it, there's a lot of mystery and adventure, and that's kind of the first game I've played where I was just like, oh my god, I was so gripped, I was like taken away to a different world. Totally. Um, and. Um, I thought to myself, if I'm going to make a game, I want it to have that same sort of feel. Like, you get really involved with characters, you get really taken away. Like, like what is going on? Like, I want to know what's going on next. Um, of course, 3D would have been ideal, but 3D was too hard. So I thought, yes. what, can, what can I do instead? I'm going to go for 2D and pixel art. So I went for pixel art instead and 2D. But I still want to kind of get the same sort of feeling where um you're gonna be taken on adventure you're gonna be taken on like on like some sort of quest some sort of mystery um and that's why i kind of been inspired all the zelda games really like they have that sort of like adventure mystery um and that's kind of like a big a big like i'm a big fan so totally yeah i um i've actually been recently playing uh i'm not sure if you ever played the Mega Man and t warrior series uh back in like like game boy i loved like land yeah. and Mega Man and everything and um yeah. <clears throat> like one of the starting areas and i think it was the trailer where you have like the the inside of his of his house and everything in the kitchen area i'm like this is this reminds me of like land's kitchen a little bit like and i just i love that pixel art style it's just so it's so fun mm -hmm. um i mean yeah it's not that eyes right pixel art has been around uh you can play like, the old mario games and, and it still looks beautiful right yes. so um i thought why not choose the style because it's a style that's never going to die like there's people right. who like of pixel art like it's so funny when um people were walking past um in some year and they saw like high school hills and they, they saw like the actual gameplay like oh it's like, it's like stardew valley <laughs> i think like stardew valley is like such a massive game right right um, and, and pixel art has been around before that but because it, he has such a, that's a massive fan base you know people see and think oh like it's beautiful i like it it's, it's um you know it's, it's it's so cute 
So, you know, even for the people who haven't played old pixel art games, you know, people, new people coming in, like the younger generation, still see it and think, wow, this looks amazing. So there's something about pixel art that people love. Totally. So it's a, it's a good choice. Good choice to, to play with. Yeah, abs absolutely. And I, and I would say that pixel art is a lot less scopey than 3D in so many <laughs> ways. Um, <clears throat> and, and not to mention, there are so many like realistic games that are trying to like do the <laughs> next next gen, um, you know, like you can see every hair follicle on, on your face, um, yeah. you know, and was that? It can be like, it can be like, it can be beautiful, but then lack story. Like, yes. And that, that is a problem, right? Like people, yeah, yeah. want to look at beautiful things but if it's lacking a story or if it's just like a money grab that's the problem right these triple a games exactly exactly and, and, it's, and it's more of like it, it takes so much time to do like that kind of thing you know of course there's like new tools coming out all the time there's like oh instant character generator or whatever but regardless mm -hmm. if it has no soul uh to the game mm -hmm. like and, and also just the scope of it like pixel art is so much like faster to be able to implement and everything and so if you're new to mm -hmm. games i think that is so strong right and like mm -hmm. you can totally make the same or more money uh doing doing pixel art than a realistic game because a lot of people don't like realistic games like i know i don't <laughs> it's true no, I, I, yeah i totally agree like um again it can come back to like it can come down to the story like yeah. it can look amazing but it's like oh i'm walking around an empty world totally well, not empty but nice beautiful world but what is the what is the aim of this game like okay go and get this okay go and get that but then there's no like real like you know, bond with the characters. There's, there's nothing. It's, it's like, well, okay. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it's an empty yeah. chore simulator, as I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I like <laughs> when I made my first major baddie for uh, for Abyss of Neptune, that took me, I think, around two months to make. So oh. if so, like, just for that in that perspective of like time and everything, like that just takes so much more time. And so I think that like between like coding in a 2D rather than a third plane, as well as like pixel art being so much faster and so much iterative, like, you know, easily iterative. I think it's really, really cool um, and really smart as well. Like me being in 3D is not me, like, I just, I just love sculpting. And so that's just kind of like mm -hmm. my, my jam. Um, you mm -hmm. know, sculpting in ZBrush, making stylized characters. Um, I think stylized is just, is like you're like timeless. Like I think it just, it never goes away in, in its charm and pixel art is, definitely that way too um okay so um for your for the viewers out there and everything um do you have any like advice for people just starting out just you know fresh you know fresh into like wanting to learn or wanting to wanting to grow um and and you would you have any advice for anyone trying to follow in your footsteps and be uh and do what you're doing yeah so I feel kind of echoing back to what I was saying before. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. It's okay being a solo developer. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you really want to take this serious and you really want to make something that people can play going forward, don't be afraid to be like, hey, I'm going to go out there and, and find a team. Um, I think a team is key. Um, you can even find people, like, if you, don't even have, if you don't have any money, don't worry about that. You can find people that are there who are just like you, trying to do the same thing. So you can find... A person that say, "Hey, look, do you want to make a game together? Whatever we make, we can take a cut. Like, and that way you don't have to worry about like, oh my, oh, oh no, I can't afford to pay. I don't know, a developer X amount of money. Right. You can find other people like you trying to do the same thing. Um, so um, places to look is uh, Discord. Um, like you said, uh, LinkedIn. Um, I think those are the two main things. Um, even social media, like." instagram and x there's there's people out there looking um for you know the same sort of thing so put yourself out there look for a team and do plenty of research research is key as well like if you want to learn just do the research absolutely yeah i've even i've even done like bartering time like i a programmer buddy who wanted uh you know his his game with like fun art and i'm, I'm like I need things to move. <laughs> 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 so there's so many so many avenues of finding your team and finding teammates and everything. Absolutely, oh, that's that's great advice. Um, yeah. Well, to reiterate to the audience, um, we'll have all the links in the description. Check out the game. Leon, it's been awesome having you on the third episode of the podcast. Uh, thank you so much for your time, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. 
All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I will see you on the next one. Bye. 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 We're soft starting recording now. Okay, so I know for edit. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. All right.